Hi, I'm Brad at CES. I just got out of a private demo with Sharp, one of the world leading suppliers for not just TVs and other electronics, but mainly VR displays. You can find a lot of their displays in the Quest 2, for example. I was very interested to reach out to them because this year they had a new demo, which they call the Ultra Lightweight Head Mounted Display VR Demo, even though it's also XR. And while I did check out some of their new TVs, especially a super large like mini LED display with 2000 LED zones, and also some OLED displays, which even though Sharp is a large company, is mostly focused on LCD, but they're bringing OLED to the general market for consumers, good choice. I was mostly interested in what they had to do with AR and VR. The one thing to note is what you're about to see or what I'm about to explain is not a fully finished product. Sharp is a component distributor and supplier they are mostly looking for tier one companies such as Apple, Meta, Valve, etc. to look at their stuff and say, yes, we will dedicate to mass producing all the components you're showing to us. And this demo is mostly a headset that they just kind of put together with a lot of sharp components to say, this is the best we got right now, at least at a semi-public level. Now this prototype they showed off to me and I got to put on was a 2K by 2K per eye LCD prototype with a custom pancake lenses by Sharp that their advertising is the most efficient pancake lenses on the market today. It also had some diopters for certain prescription levels and I'll get into that a little bit. Now 2K per eye is not exactly revolutionary, but the problem is they would not give me the size of the displays because this headset itself, as you can see in this video, very small, very compact compared to other LCD headsets. Of course, they don't have any components such as uh, SOC on board or that many tracking cameras. There are three tracking cameras, two for mono uh, black and white and one two for like a color pass through overlay. But again, it's a very stripped down prototype and it does weigh 180 grams. It makes you think about if PC VR was still as relevant as standalone is today, how small headsets can get if you had to rely on tethering to a PC. So as terms as visuals go, it is running off a smartphone tethered to a smartphone that clips on your waist. It's not probably the best demo to showcase the true quality of the displays in my opinion. And it kind of shown that. It was actually such an unfortunate demo because even though the first time I tried it, it was not in the correct diopter setting and I would actually adjust it to pretty much a non-diopter setting because I have pretty good eyes. Uh, I could not get it clear and I can't tell if it's due to the fact of the, the lenses being bad or just some sort of weird uh, software rendering issue because it's running off of a you know smartphone not an XR2 chip or anything there's a lot of things going on there now the one thing they were trying to show off as a concept that they believe that their two camera with one RGB camera could do with a, enough software prowess is they had a robot that they would hold uh, in front of you you would actually reach out your hand and they would do a very rudimentary uh, hand tracking to press a button and then you would uh, see the 3d scanned robot in your VR live view. But again, in terms of the optics and the views and the display go, the demo was not very good. It was just impressive at how small it can get. And they did say a lot of the components is pretty much very ready for mass production. So Brad, why did you make this video just to showcase this uh, pretty poor demo of the optics and displays? Well, I would say the biggest thing that mostly impressed me was not really the actual displays itself, ironically. So Sharp was also showing off some of their camera modules, which were more impressive to me than the actual demo itself. The most notable I want to bring up is the fact that they have an autofocusing camera, which is not very new in the smartphone market, but they're doing something pretty special. As I said earlier, Sharp is very well known for the LCD type displays, and I always wondered, as the LCDs kind of die in the market and VR and XR and everything starts growing, Will they start taking their LCD knowledge, their liquid crystal knowledge, and start applying that to cameras or lenses, on cameras, for example? And that's what Sharp did. They were showing off a solid state autofocus that required no module of moving to actually change the focus of the actual camera. And it worked very fast in sort of their demo videos and reels and everything. And the actual uh, lenses itself for the tiny camera module was very small. Now I've talked about uh, solid state liquid crystal lenses for a while. It's the same technology that if you were to scale it up to bigger lenses, it's like the solid state verifocal lenses. So it was really exciting. I asked the people uh, at Sharp when they would be able to bring this to mass production if they found a partner. And they said they would be able to bring this camera module within mass production in a couple of months. So very impressive. Sharp is not a small company. They're very big. 
they can design stuff with R&D and bring it to mass production very quick as long as they find the correct uh, tier one partner. And finally, some of the other cool stuff they were showing off in terms of like cameras is they were showing off a IR based uh, eye tracking camera that would go into the sort of lens optical system for eye tracking. And this camera was like just crazy tiny, smaller than a grain of rice if you saw it in person. Uh, and it did about a 400 by 400 resolution, which is about the standard uh, actual eye tracking resolution of the Quest Pro cameras. So again, um, it was interesting to talk to them and see a little bit what they were going on, even though I couldn't get the display sizes. I'm guessing it's around two inches uh, diagonal or lower for the LCD displays in this headset. And again, Sharp's gonna keep producing LCDs for VR companies until we switch to more other new technologies. But of course, those new technologies are still expensive. They'll reach the higher end and come to the low end. So yeah, it was interesting. Cameras. Okay, bye.